Hi everybody, and welcome back. Um, today we're going to do the what I call the technical appendix to the um, "Is Liverpool Better Off with Jurgen Klopp?" Uh, lesson. And I wanted to show you how to do this in R. Um, this probably deserves its own set of videos, um, but what I wanted to do was teach you maybe some basics in R, at least how to do this. If you want to be good at the uh, programming language R. Um, there's a number of ways to do it. I might do, like I said, do some tutorials later. But for now, I just want to show you, for those of you maybe with some familiarity, I want to show you exactly what I did in the more technical version of it. Um, I gave you the Excel version for perhaps beginners to analytics, and now I want to give you the more technical version for people with some statistical programming experience. Um, a quick note, those of you who don't know anything about R, it's a free uh, software package you can use. It's incredibly powerful. It's free. It's what a lot of employers are using now, so it's what I have all my students as of this year learn. Um, it's versatile. It's free. It's powerful, and it does anything you'd ever want it to do, including creating pretty plots when you're done with your work. So that's why I use it. Um, you should look up Swirl in R, um, S W I R L, as a good library to sort of teach you how to do it. There's a number of different ways, but that's the best way to just throw yourself into it. It's very encouraging. Very good. Um, I'm using RStudio, as you can see up here. It's a nice way of managing all your different files. As you can see, I've got a bunch of different files open for um, my class at Mary Washington, actually about machine learning and whatnot. So, um, but for now, I want to go over how to do some what we did in the Has Liverpool Improved under Jurgen Klopp lesson. I wanted to do it in R to show you how I would do it and maybe show you a little bit more technical version of it. So the first thing you want to do is install the ggplot2 library. And this is what most people use to do their plotting in. Um, I'm not going to run this line because I already have it installed, but if you don't have it, you should install it immediately. Um, it's really easy. It seems a lot harder than it is. I resisted the switch from base graphics to ggplot2 for quite a while. Um, but then I saw a bunch of you know young folks on the Twitter using it, and I thought, well, if they can do it, um, maybe I shouldn't be Old Man Murphy, and I should try to figure it out myself. So I've done it. It's a lot easier than I thought, and actually all my students have learned it this semester, and they've picked up on it a lot faster than base graphics. So let me recommend it. To run these lines, you hit Control-R on a PC. I think it's Command-Enter on the Mac. Uh, you run it. It'll install the ggplot2 library. Life is good. Um, we're going to then load that into our workspace. Um, so I've done that. A quick note, too, before I go on. The hashtags here um, represent a comment. So anything after the hashtag is me commenting up my code. And I wanted to give you all um, a very clear description of what each line was doing. I'll upload this. I'll post the link in the comments on the YouTube video, and then I'll probably put another banner at the bottom for a second here. Um, but that's going to be for you all to click if you want to run this yourself. And I think probably you all should. I mean, if you're interested in this, then you should maybe... Um, take the next step and try to learn some basic programming. It's not nearly as hard as you think it is, um, unless you think it's really easy, then it's probably about that hard. Uh, so comment up all your code so you can go back to it later. I have five or six scripts I refer to all the time. Enough exposition. Um, Mango's about to walk right past me. There, It's just a new tradition that Mango has to walk by. He leaves me alone most of the day. When I'm recording, he has to be around me. Uh, anyway. So the first thing we're going to do after we load the ggplot library is to load an object called less3. I just called it that because this is the third lesson if you count syllabus day. Um, and what that is, is it reads a CSV file I uploaded to my website. You can use this exact line and it'll run for you. This is that data set I showed you in the other videos. Um, it's a CSV file and now it's in R. Um, so if you run the call names lesson3, this shows you the names of all the columns in that object. And as you can see, there's points, coach, goal scored, goals allowed, expected goals, and expected goals allowed, just like in the last video. Everything's the same. We're just doing an R instead of Excel. So if we're going to run the difference of means tests, or the T tests, if you will, it's a simple command. Just do T dot test, in parentheses, less three, dollar sign points, and that means take the points column, do a tilde, less three, dollar sign coach. Ignore, I actually accidentally moved the tilde there. Less three, dollar sign coach. So what this is going to do is run a difference of mean test of points between the two coaches. Control R runs the line. 
and you get a nice Welch two sample t-test here. This should look very familiar. As you can see, you have um, 1.4 points for Klopp, 1.5 points for Rogers. This is exactly what we had before. Um, here's a 95% confidence interval, and that includes zero. Zero is between these two numbers, which means we can't statistically distinguish between Klopp and Rogers. They're effectively the same. T value, degrees of freedom, P value 0.92. Again, that's high, well over the 0 0.05 we need. This should all just look like the Excel spreadsheet we did. It's just an R, so it's fancier, and fancier, as we know, obviously means better. Difference of means test for um, goals scored. Again, 1.6 to 1 goal. Not significant still. Um, part of that, again, is due to the low number of degrees of freedom, but 23 actually isn't that bad. Um, 0.23, low p-value, but not low enough. What about goals allowed? Again, same thing. XG, expected goals, chances created, same thing we saw earlier. Expected goals allowed, again, same thing we saw earlier. That's all it is. It's actually maybe potentially easier than using Excel. A little bit of familiar, uh, familiarity in R will take you a long way. Like I said, maybe almost easier than Excel. There's actually fewer things to type in. The output's a lot more instructive and a lot clearer. It's a reason to maybe learn some R. If you're trying to get into this and actually do some stuff, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it. Almost make it mandatory. Um, partly I won't because I don't have that power, but you really should learn R. Um, if nothing else, you'll seem smart, and the reality is that's probably 90% of it. So the next thing we're going to do is get ready to do our GG plot. We didn't do any data viz in the last one, and data viz, um, visualization if you will, is the best way to show what you're doing. Show me, don't tell me. It's a famous saying from screenwriting, but really it applies to just about anything. Um, show me what you have, don't tell me. Twitter has all sorts of stuff about how pictures get far more engagement than words. Um, we like pictures better, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is create a vector of colors called calls, for lack of a better word. Um, calls, this arrow, it's um, simply the less than sign and a dash. That means we're going to store all this in an item, an object, called calls. C means a vector, so C parentheses in quotation marks brown1, comma, uh, quotation marks blanched almond, end your parentheses. We're having a couple strings here. One is brown1, the other is blanched almond. I picked a couple colors that looked like Liverpool colors. Um, brown1 actually looks red, at least on my screen. I assume it looks the same on everyone's screen. Um, the actual reds are far too bright on my monitor, hurt my eyes, so I, I prefer a more subtle red, which ironically is called brown. Blanched Almond is a white, but it's an off-white, um, so it looks better than just the plain white, especially on a white background. That's all I'm doing, creating a couple colors here to compare Klopp to Rogers. I want to walk through the syntax for ggplot, and this is probably worth a separate video, and if you want to learn this, you'll probably want to learn it in a lot more systematic way, but this has been the way I've taught it to my um, undergrads, and so I thought this would be a great way to introduce you all to the idea, at least in my videos here. So I'm going to create an object called G. Why G? Why not G is a better question. And I'm going to store it, again, there's the arrow, in a ggplot object. And the aesthetics, AES, are going to be X equals coach, Y equals points. So I'm using coach to predict the amount of points a team has. Your x variable is always your explanatory variable. Your y is always the variable you're predicting. So predicting number of points based on who was the coach. Fill equals coach just tells it what color to use, how it should use the colors. Comma, data equals last three. You run this line. And actually, I should run the calls line, too. I was busy talking about it. I never ran it. Um, what this does is creates a ggplot object, and all it knows is that the x variable is coach, the y variable is points, and we should fill it with colors by coach using data equals less three. That's what the base ggplot is going to look like now. I'm going to create something called a violin plot, and I'm going to run this line first. So the first thing you do is just g and then plus geom underscore violin empty parentheses. Um, I'm going to run it and I'm going to tell you what it does. 
as it works. I guess I'll tell you what it does. It's going somewhat slow. Um, what I want to do here is create a violin plot using this ggplot library. And this is the simplest version. So I've got the X and Y variables. I've got, it's going to be filled by coach, and it's a violin plot. Um, I'll probably do a longer video on why violin plots are good later. They're effectively a better form of the box and whisker plot you all remember from sixth grade or whenever you did those the first time. You can see they show the sort of distribution of the data. How many zeros are there? How many ones are there? There's no twos, so you can see it goes in a little bit. And then how many threes are there? Um, it's just like the old box and whisker plot, except it's a little bit more descriptive. Everyone should be using violin plots instead of box plots. No more box plots on Analytics Twitter in 2016. Um, that's my big goal in life. But again, we have a ggplot function. All we did was add the violin plots. That was simple. Look how cool this graph looks. Until pink is Klopp, blue is Rogers. We're going to change that later, but for now, that's what we have. Now I want to add the points. So I'm going to add something called geomjitter. And geomjitter, what this does, well, let me show you. You run that line, and here you go. It puts all the points in. How many zeros are there? How many losses? How many ones? How many draws? How many threes? How many wins? And you can see they're not quite in a straight line, and they're not quite on top of each other. The geomjitter makes it so they're all not plotted on exactly the same spot. So you can see exactly how many there are. If you did geom point, you would see just three points here. One at zero, one at one. 1 at 3. Jitter with width 0.25, height 0.05 makes them offset a little bit, lets you see better. What I want you to see is really how easy this was. ggplot was incredibly overwhelming to me. R can be incredibly overwhelming, but none of this has been incredibly difficult. I mean, it's a couple lines of code. You can take this and cannibalize it for yourself. We've done some powerful things already. Um, life is good. The next thing I want to add is the chord flip, it's called. Um, I like my graphs being horizontal as opposed to vertical. Um, it's sort of just a thing I prefer. You don't have to. But so this chord flip with um, parentheses, it flips them the x and y axes and gives you a couple horizontal violin plots, which you'll see as soon as R loads them. Um, and there you go. Exact same graph, horizontal instead of vertical. Very cool. I want to get rid of this legend here. Next. We already see Rogers, we already see Klopp. I don't need to know that this is Klopp and Rogers. It's what we call chart junk. It doesn't add anything to the process. Then don't have it in there. That's sort of just a good rule of thumb. If you don't need it, don't have it. Keep your charts as clean as possible. So we're going to add plus guides, fill equals false. And this tells it to suppress the legend. I'm walking through this line by line so you can see exactly how easy it is just to change everything. If you scroll down here, you'll see here's my final plot right here. Um, this one actually, or this one right here. That looks overwhelming. It's a lot of text. It's a lot of code. I want you to see it's just a matter of adding it line by line by line. So we got rid of the legends with this guides fill equals false. Now let's add those colors we did earlier in calls. Scale, fill, manual, values equals calls. And there we go. This looks a lot nicer. We got a red one. We've got a whitish one. Life is good. Now I want to change the labels because coach and points, that's ugly. I'm going to keep it at points, but it's lowercase. I don't like that. This doesn't need a label because we can clearly see Rogers and Klopp there. So we run it again. There you go starting to look cleaner and cleaner every time and better and better every time. The last thing I want to add is a title because I don't know what this is. So we add plus GG title. Easy enough. Um, in the last one we added XLab and YLab. So this one we're going to add um, a title too. So here we go. Um, you probably just saw my battery warning right there. I thought it was plugged in, but it wasn't. And there we go. Rogers and Klopp earn the same points per game in 2015 and 2016. This um, slash n just adds a space there. I like it better. It has a space. You don't have to do it, but it's something I do. Um, one note for everybody, and I see this a lot everywhere, and I actually just learned this from a couple of smart political science folks. Um, label your graphs. Don't just label it saying what it is. Label it saying what it tells me. It's so much easier to understand your graph if you tell me what I'm supposed to be looking for. So... Rodgers and Klopp earned the same points per game in 2015-2016. Oh, that's interesting. Let me look. 
Yeah, these violin plots look almost exactly the same. Life is good. There you go. This was simple. We created our first plot. It looks professional. It looks clean. It looks nice. And this shows all that hard work you did in Excel earlier. And it shows it in a better way than just presenting some numbers. I'm going to do the same thing here with um, your XG. So G2 is a GG plot with X as coach. Y is XG. Expected goals, chances created. Fills the same, data is the same. Now, I've got the exact same stuff here I had in the last one. These two, this line right here, and this one should look very familiar. All I did was change the Y label and the title. And there you go. There's the expected goals per game. Again, Klopp has a couple outliers over here, but for the most part, they're in that sort of 0 to 2 range. Haven't seen an offensive explosion under Klopp. What about defensive prowess? Well, let's do a G3. And again, we just ran the line. G3 is a GG plot object with coach. Expected goals allowed. Everything else is the same. Everything here, again, is the same. It's just plots, expected goals allowed. We changed the Y label. We changed the title. Everything else, exactly the same. And there you go. So expected goals allowed, again, look very similar except for that one wacky outlier we have here. I forget which game it is. Um, but Klopp had a really bad game at some point. That's all there is to it. Um, this video went a little bit longer than I wanted it to at 16 minutes, but I think we accomplished quite a bit. Um, I'll post this script again. Download it. You have the data set as public. I'm sharing it with you all. You can run this yourself. You can add other variables to it. You can do whatever you want. Um, but it's there for you. You're ready to go. Um, this was a quick introduction to R and ggplot. If you want to learn more, there's plenty of good resources out there. I'll, I might do a video myself um, going through this in a little bit more detail. Um, the other option is I'll just plot everything I do and I'll go through it slowly so you can have a number of different examples and a number of different things you can cannibalize yourself. Um, but otherwise, here's the technical appendix. It wasn't actually that much more difficult than the Excel version. In a lot of ways, it was easier. And I really want you to take that to heart. That R seems daunting, and this is all complicated code, and maybe you're not a computer science person, but this was pretty simple. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out the right syntax, and you can Google that for the most part. Um, analytics are easy. Math is fun. Math is easy. Analytics is fun. Analytics is easy. Programming. Fun. Easy. Um, thank you all. The response to these videos has been great. And like I say at the end of everyone, if you like this, please give me a share on Twitter. Uh, tweet it yourself or retweet one of my tweets. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I have something like 85 subscribers right now. I need to get to 100 before I can get my own custom channel name. Um, so I'd really appreciate that. And um, with that, that's all. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next time for my next video where we start putting together um, an expected goals model.